I see this mistake all the time and it literally assaults my eyeballs. So I'm gonna fix this once and for all. And if I still see people making this mistake after this tutorial, they're gonna have me to deal with. <laughs> so the biggest mistake I see when it comes to character animation is not using the pose to pose method. So for example, they create their rig like this little dude here, and then they just start adding keyframes. So let's say they want to lift this arm up and maybe they want to do something with the right arm as well. Do a little something like that. And they're not even lining up the keyframes. They're just like, mm, let me just pop this in. You know, things need to be offset. It's animation after all. Make the head move a little bit. Give the neck some action. Let's just drop an easy ease on that. And there you have it. And what you end up with is frankly an abomination. The person does not move like this, with all their body parts moving independently of one another. We perform actions in sync, one at a time. So let's fix this. We're going to start with this book, The Animator Survival Kit by Richard Williams. And I know what you're probably thinking. I'm a motion designer. I don't need some animation book. I'm not a frame by frame animator. That's why I created this character rig. Wrong. Good motion designers understand frame-by-frame frame animation and they know that you have to consider every frame, even in After Effects. So what does this book have to say about character animation? Well, frankly, a whole lot. A whole lot more than we can cover in this video. I mean, it's pretty much a whole book just on character animation. So maybe buy it and try and learn something for once. So what we need to look at is this, the pose to pose method. And the way that we apply this method is by laying a foundation of key poses for an action and then in between we fill in the extreme poses. For example, a walk cycle has these extremes. Your contact positions, your passing positions, as well as your up and down positions. And you can find these key poses by looking at video references and breaking them down into the extreme poses. On a side note, please use references. They're going to make your animations much more believable because what you have going on in your little noggin, it's just not gonna cut it. And if you can't find the right references, make your own. But the obvious next question is, how do we apply a frame by frame technique in After Effects? The answer is hold keyframes. For starters, let's take a look at the reference that I recorded earlier so that we have a basis for our punch animation. So this is the video. And you can see a quick little punch. So on top of that, I've just drawn in uh, these stick figures to represent uh, each key pose. So this is kind of our, our resting pose, and then we move into the anticipation pose, and then the actual punch pose, and back to our resting pose. Now if I isolate those drawings that I did on top of the video, and just turn it into a quick animation, this is what we get. There are those key poses in action and already it's starting to feel like a punch. So this is really a good basis to work from. Okay, so we're back in our character recomposition and I've imported our uh, animation reference frames just so that we can have a look at those while we're creating our animation. So for starters, I've created hold keyframes for uh, this initial resting frame and I'm just gonna come 10 frames forward and I'm going to simply copy these across because it's always a good idea to start your new poses from your baseline pose. So everything's kind of set to zero essentially. So I'm gonna clone those and our animation is just slightly off so I'm gonna pull this back until we get that next pose. Okay, so there's our reference pose and we can start to build this out. So for starters, I'm going to bring the cog back a couple clicks down slightly. I'm going to move this right leg out so we don't really have too much of that happening in our reference but I think it'll be quite nice if they pull that leg out and we get a nice strong line of action from that. So what I'm going to do next is add a bit of rotation to the cog so let's try minus 10 and I think we can do minus 10 as well on our torso. So you can see there's a really nice line of action here. It's like a nice coil, a pullback before that punch. Um, 
arms and I'm gonna come up to my right arm and let's change this to something like 45 and negative 130. And you can see it's slightly different to our reference pose and that's because with the limitations of our rig, we can't really get this kind of pose. We don't have the ability to pose our elbow and because of the way I designed this thing with this big gauntlet, the, the rig is slightly limited. So I don't really recommend going so uh, bold with the arm gear for client work, but this is for fun and we're just trying to learn the technique here. So I thought, why the hell not? But I think regardless, this will work nicely as an anticipation pose. Then I'm gonna come to our uh, left arm here and I'm gonna make this negative 25 make that negative 5 maybe even negative 10 so there's a bit more of a bend like our reference and the way I've set up this rig is so that you can pose the shoulders so I'm just gonna make sure that this oh, not that one I'm gonna make sure that it lines up correctly and uh, if I come have a look down here I actually have a handle here to control that so I'm gonna just make sure that lines up and that looks good. What I need to do now is come up to the head and neck and give those a bit of extra rotation. So negative five on both. And that just accentuates this line of action. And another thing to think about when you're doing character animation is the silhouette. So you wanna make sure that even as a silhouette, your character is going to read nicely. And that's why I left the space in between the arm and the body here. I could have lifted the gauntlet up a bit higher, but it would have interfered with the shadow and the silhouette. And right now this is reading quite nicely as a silhouette, you'll be able to read it easily. So the next pose is going to be our actual punch. So once again, I'm gonna move 10 frames forward and we're going to copy our initial keyframes. So I'm gonna clone those. And now we're back to our baseline pose. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grab our cog, and I'm gonna move him forward a bit and down a little bit because it's a bit of a, a low punch. We also need to copy over our right leg because as you remember this actually moved over and it's going to stay in that position for our punch frame so I'm going to hit Control c and Control v to copy that over. Then come back to the position of my cog and what I'm looking for is a straight back leg and a bent front leg. I want it to be nice and straight there so I'm going to come just one click above where it bends. Okay, then I'm going to bring the torso forward, maybe 15 frames. And again, I'm trying to create this nice line of action so that from the leg all the way through the torso, we're getting this nice line of action. Then with our right arm, I'm actually going to keep it completely straight. So zero on the lower is fine. And I'm just going to change the upper to about negative 100. Again, I need to change my shoulder position. So let's bring that down. Let's bring that over. I want it to be coming forward a little bit. So something like that. Now, because our character is shifted forward this way and the weight's on the front leg, the center of gravity has changed. In order to counteract that, I'm going to take our left arm and I'm going to pull that all the way back. We're going to make it something like 65. And you can see that just maintains our center of gravity and just offsets the imbalance that we're getting from a pose like this. Then I'm just going to add a little bit of rotation to the neck. So maybe like five forward, maybe negative five on the head. So it's looking up slightly and that keeps this line of action looking right to me. Something you can do just to assess your poses as you're going through them is using the J and K keys on your keyboard. So if you hit J, it jumps back between your keyframes on your timeline. And if you hit K, it jumps forward. So I'm just going to uh, have a look at the contrast between these two. Because uh, what you're always looking for in character animation when you're doing the pose pose method is good contrast between your poses so that each one is strong and there's enough change in between each one. So that's looking good. There is something that I want to add to this 
right foot. So I'm just gonna come back into that. And so I wanted to lift up slightly in our anticipation pose, just to add a bit of emphasis to the, the punch that comes afterwards. So I wanna add some rotation to the foot. And I've set up these guidelines so that I can make sure the foot remains in place. So I'm just gonna shift that into the right position, just like that. Okay, then if I come back out, we get the foot lifting up and hitting down again, which I think is quite nice. Okay, I think we can move on to our next pose now. Uh, so I'm just gonna jump another 10 uh, frames forward. At this point, we basically completed everything. So I'm just going to uh, go back into our initial pose, the settle part of this animation. So I'll just clone that. The one thing that we could add to add a bit of uh, extra interest here is a bit of rotation to our hands. So I'm going to give that a minus five rotation. And I think we can do the same with this hand here as well, maybe plus five. So we can actually give this a play to assess the timing. I'm going to turn off our punch reference now at this point. So I want there to be a bit more time between our initial pose and our anticipation pose. So I'm gonna bring this a few frames forward to about 19, just because I want it to be the slow pullback before the punch, and then the actual punch I'm gonna make a bit quicker. So it's about 10 frames now, I'm gonna take it down to about eight frames, just so it's a bit quicker of an action. I also want this punch frame to hold for a couple of frames. So I'm gonna go six frames forward and I'm going to clone those. And then I think for our settle, we can make it come back in a bit slowly. So I'm gonna move about 12 frames forward. Okay, so we can play that as well. So you can see it's a bit of a slow pullback, fast punch, punch holds for a bit, and then we come back into our initial pose. So these hold keyframes are a great basis and from here we can add the easing that we want and we can also offset parts of the body to add a bit more interest. So when it comes to tweening animation, every animation is going to be different and there's often quite a lot of finessing involved. So don't worry if things aren't feeling right initially. You know, you just need to kind of keep tweaking. But using this pose to pose method is a great way to keep things fairly consistent, so you're not gonna have to do too much tweaking when you get to the tweening phase. But for starters, what we can do is grab all of our keyframes and hit F9 to easy ease them. And give that a preview. Okay, so we have a bit of jigglies, and I know why that's happening, because we have a bit of curvature on our uh, position keyframes. So I'm just gonna right click these and click on keyframe interpolation spatial interpolation from continuous Bezier to linear, hit OK. And I believe on our right leg we have this happening as well. So I'm just going to get rid of that. We want to just preview this without any weird jigglies. OK, so you can see that's already kind of a passable animation. But what we're gonna do is mess around with the easing to make this much stronger. So for starters, let's come to our initial pose. And what I'm gonna do is add a strong ease out. So I could come in here and make this all kind of a round 60, but I like to be a bit more precise, so I'm just gonna use this tool and drop in 60 easing out. Then for our next pose, which is our anticipation pose, I want it to come into this quite slowly and I want it to release slowly and then hit really hard. So I'm gonna add an 80 out and an 80 in and I'm gonna come to this frame. And I think this can actually just keep a regular easy ease. And of course we don't need to do anything to this pose. And then for our resting pose, I think we can just add a 60 in. Okay, so we can give that another preview. So already that's feeling much more powerful. When it comes to punches, you really want a lot of power into those. But I think we can actually add even more power by selecting these keyframes and giving this 100% uh, ease out. There we go, that's a nice solid punch. That's what I'm looking for. Nice snap, boom. So the next thing I want to do is mess around with this foot here. So right now it's sliding and I want it to be a lift. 
And because I'm doing it this way, I also want the cog to lift slightly as well. So it feels like a kind of step up. So like kind of lifting and shifting their weight onto that back foot. Now the next issue we're gonna have is that while this back leg is lifting, it's still bent. So in order to fix that, I'm gonna drag in this keyframe, just so it lands before the hips. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, then we also want this foot here to come down faster. So right now it's slowly coming down and as the weight shifts from the back foot to the front, it's going to come down very quickly. So I'm gonna just take a look at uh, what's happening with these and what I'm gonna do is just bring this in on the right so it hits harder and I'm going to change this easing to just a regular easy ease which is about 35%. So you can see that's coming down nice and quickly as the weight shifts from one foot to the other. Great. Okay, from here we can start to offset things a little bit just to add some visual interest and uh, add a bit of uh, overlapping action which is really the, the hallmark of good character animation. With these frames here, we really don't want to offset those because that's where the punch is hitting. So I'm going to leave those as is. But all the other keyframes outside of that are open for business. So let's do some offsetting. I'm gonna grab the hips and the torso and I'm just gonna shift those each one frame forward, starting with the hips. And then I'll move the torso one frame past that. We could even do two if we wanted to be really bold. But you always want to think about the chain. So starting with the hips, ending with the torso so that you get this nice overlap of action. Then uh, what I'll do is I'll come to our right arm. So we want this to be the focus. So I think I'm gonna add the most offset to this arm so that we're always seeing that moving last. For starters, I'm just gonna shift these out by a frame and then I'm gonna grab our hand rotation and our forearm rotation. Shift those one frame forward and then the hands will come one frame forward after that. And uh, if you were wondering how I was shifting these forward, I haven't mentioned it. If you hold Alt and left or right on your keyboard, you can shift keyframes left or right in either direction, depending on which key you hit. So that's a very useful tip. And if you hit shift at the same time, it'll move them by 10 frames. Now let's do the same thing with our other arm and I'm gonna shift this uh, ending pose out by a frame and I'm gonna grab our forearm and hand and each of those are gonna get one frame forward. There you go. Then we're gonna come up to the head and neck and I'm gonna grab these initial keyframes as well and those are just gonna be shifted forward, starting with the neck, of course, and ending with the head. Let's preview that. Yeah, and that's actually looking really good. I think the offsetting is really nice. The one thing I would say is that we can probably have our right arm shift out even more. I think this is the focus, so we can, we can have it be the last limb moving at the end. So let's check that out. You know, looking at the head and neck, I think we can even send these out an extra frame. Essentially we have a passable animation, but you can add a bit of extra overlapping action by coming into areas like this. So with the head for instance, I could have this shift slightly forward as the body's moving back. And if I hit control and click twice, this becomes a continuous bezier. When we preview that, we get a bit of a nice little extra motion to the head and that can look really nice. You know, I think that adds quite a lot actually. I also want to come to our cog torso and I'm going to move that out one more keyframe as well. The next thing I think could be quite nice to add to this is as this arm's moving back we can just give it a little bit of a sway. Right now because of the way our animation's set up it's moving in one motion so I'm just going to add a bit of animation and make that again a continuous bezier. Let's have a look at that. Mm, much better.
So at this point, one could keep tweaking things here and there to finesse it however you like. But this is essentially the process of creating an animation using the post-pose method. And you can see it's very structured. And when you stick to this kind of structure, you really get a much better result. And things are in sync. We're not getting all this weird out of sync movement. And that's by design. And of course, you can add little bits of overlap like we have, but you're still starting from this rigid structure. And this process will help you create much better character animation. So the final embellishments I added were just a bit of animation on the hair and I added uh, some path animation to the gauntlet so that it changes perspective slightly at this point and in the hand comp I rigged up this hand so that I could get the fingers to do a little bit of a uh, anticipatory action to really show this guy means business. And of course, this is the final animation with a bit of camera movement and the result of our punch animation. So yeah, maybe take a page out of this guy's book and smash like. Maybe I should have made it smash subscribe. Anyway, thanks for watching. At this point, you should be able to use this method for basic animations. So please, no more wishy-washy keyframes and out of sync actions. And until next time, Keep making those motion gains.